All right, water and sewer meeting, July 11th at 6.30. So we've got a quorum with four of us. Anything else we need to add to the agenda? Seeing none, I'll make a motion. We approve the agenda. Is there a second? Second. second. All right, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 We have approval of the June 13th minutes. Motion to accept that. Here, here. I was like, is that a motion? Sure, yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll move to minutes. <laughs> the two people were here. For a second. Second. All in favor? Signal by saying aye. 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 That's approved. Uh, let's see. Just our updates. So if you want to comment on contract yeah, one. Start with contract one. Um, we do have our prepped a memo, same memo that we prep every first part every month that goes to the PCA and the city council. Um, but lots continues to go on at the treatment facility, although a lot of items are really getting wrapped up. Um, a lot of the plumbing, a lot of the uh, mechanical, um, even the finished work in the structures is is moving along pretty quickly. Uh, structures are backfilled. Site grading is getting close to complete. Um, a lot of things are kind of coming together there, so that's good. Um, over the next month or so, we can expect to uh, see that work kind of continue. We're talking about installing fencing around the perimeter of the facility as well as the gates, uh, talking about concrete paving or bituminous paving. Uh, they continue to install uh, concrete work. Um, there's some sidewalks, uh, the concrete pad for the biosolid load out. Um, uh, they'll be installing um, light poles uh, around the perimeter. Uh, the electrical work continues. Uh, they continue to do what they can do at this point. Um, but a lot of work that continues in that in that vein. So, um, you know, by the end of July, really, Stop is planning to reduce their forces significantly. There, there won't be much left for them. Um, they do have a pay request totaling three hundred six thousand nine hundred and one dollar and zero or twenty cents. Um, so that brings their contract total up to um, before the retainage is removed about eighteen thousand or eighteen million seven hundred and thirty five thousand dollars worth of work out of the almost twenty one million dollars. So they're getting right down there, and really the the biggest thing that remains is the electrical work. Um, and so you guys know the status of switch switch the switch gear. Nothing's new on that. Um, we did have a construction coordination meeting today uh, and got updates on things. The one update that we did get is that the uh, motor control centers were supposed to be delivered uh, on the 7th of July. They did not come. Uh, they're now being promised on July 31st. Um, so that essentially about a three week delay. Um, and what that does is it continues to make it more difficult for the electrical contractor to pull all that together. You know, that's the one thing they're really waiting for aside from the switch gear. And so they're getting concerned about how they're really gonna be crunched at the end. Um, and uh, so we're hopeful that that motor control center will continue to stay on, on the current delivery schedule of July 31st, which was, you know, three weeks later than what we've been talking about. Um, but, uh, and then continuing to work on that September commissioning and October startup. And the reality is uh, those dates might slide, you know, two to four weeks, depending on when things do come yeah. in and how, how uh, quickly the electrician's able to progress their work. 
So um, a little bit up in the air on that based on the feedback that we got today. Um, but we'll continue to kind of work through that. Um, but they do seem optimistic that we will see those water control centers. Um, they kind of say that things are improving in terms of their delivery schedule and um, I guess we'll see. It's an item we don't have a lot of control over. Um, we continue to talk about the plan for furnishing the two 400 amp electrical panels uh, to operate the wastewater treatment facility. Um, nothing's really changed there. And then the other item is those change orders uh, that we talked about. Uh, we requested additional information or documentation for um, really the two bigger change orders that we talked about last month, one associated with modifications to the uh, motor control centers and some of the other, the other uh, electric components that are being delivered. And then the other change uh, is associated with, you know, the temp power situation and, and uh, paying for the electrician's efforts on that. Um, and we've asked for additional information on both those items that at this point haven't got anything. Um, so I did talk to Stop on that. They continue to work on that. I think the bottom line is people are really busy right now. And uh, that's not a production item. They, it's getting pushed to the side. Um, so those are the updates at the wastewater treatment facility. Um, went through that all pretty quickly. Um, we'll talk about it a little bit down the agenda, but we do have the RFP out for operations, um, operation maintenance and management of the wastewater system. Uh, we do have an open house tomorrow for those folks to come in and uh, kind of tour the facility and ask some questions and get a sense of uh, what the project all entails over and above what's in the RFP and, and all the information that we sent them. So uh, we expect that uh, We'll be busy from 10 to probably 12. Um, and if you people want to come out, you probably can come out um, uh, or another day. Maybe Fridays are maybe the best days to come out and take a look if anybody's interested um, to kind of see it has really taken shape. I think, Jim, you were out there most recently, Rylan, and you were out there. Yeah. Yeah. And Joe went too, right? Uh huh. Yeah. But yeah, he was always there. there. Yeah. Yeah. So things are really kind of taking shape out there. <clears throat> well, well, I think I missed an earlier comment before the meeting. So how many people do you think are coming? Or how many uh, we think that there's at least two contractors coming. I think PP, Peoples and Violi will be there. Well, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then U.S. Water kind of said that they weren't coming. Right. Yeah. And they won't be getting. <clears throat> Would it be advantageous, do you think, if any of the committee members wanted to participate in that as well, kind of get a feel for um, interaction with the people that will be there? Just a thought. It, it'd be fine if you want to. Um, my experience with these meetings are people are pretty, play it pretty close to the vest. <laughs> at least, yeah, at least I do. Right? Yeah. yeah, you don't want to, you don't want to give anything away, so to speak, or let people know how you might. You'll have an interview opportunity later. Yeah, but you're certainly welcome to come if you want, or um, it's at 10 o'clock starting at the wastewater treatment plant, probably from 10 to 12. We'll Start at the treatment facility, and then I thought we'd probably go to um, at least one of the lift station sites um, and uh, kind of go from there. I don't know that there's too much to see aside from the wastewater treatment facility at this point, but they can, you know, lift stations are lift stations, so shouldn't be anything new for those folks. Maybe we'll we'll take a sneak peek at the grander stations too. That might be something that they'd be interested in, at least knowing a little bit about how those systems are and how those houses are configured. So, will those be on the 
scope for the service provider to maintain. They are with the response time, I'm assuming, or some, some something like that. Yeah, they've got a you know not necessarily a response time, um, but we do have you know they're supposed to monitor the system twenty and, and be on call twenty four seven. <laughs> um, anything on the treatment facility aside from that or should we move on in the agenda um, is the electrical contractor plan or, or the general planning on any cost impacts or cost increases associated with that temporary electrical service yeah they are we talked about that last last month um that's two of the um, change order requests they submitted. And we basically tabled both of them and asked for additional information because they didn't really provide us any information. They provided us with a, a very rough uh, piece of documentation that had their total price on it. Um, and the two bigger ones, one deals with modifications we asked for uh, in the shop drawing review process associated with the MCC stuff back in August of last year. And we're finally getting, or they're finally submitting a change order request for those changes. And then the second piece was um, the uh, cost for the temp panels and temporary wiring and reworking that once it's uh, delivered. And so there are costs and I don't, I can't remember those two costs off the top of my head, but they're significant, like 200,000 plus total. Yeah, I saw, I saw. Oh, well, they're in the minutes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. I, I saw the part of that, but I didn't see that something about an expediting fee, basically. But Well, there was one on that too, and we basically declined that um, change request. And that was... Uh, basically Eaton offered to expedite their manufacturer for $40,000. And then there was some additional wiring costs and things like that because the automatic transfer switch would have been removed from the panel. Yeah. Um, and we kind of collectively talked about that and decided that for the five months that that sped up the process, it really probably wasn't worth it um, given the situation. Yeah. And and we didn't have time to react. Yeah. You know, they basically made that offer that we'll expedite it and we need to know your answer within a week. Yeah. Cities really don't, <laughs> they don't respond to that uh, very well. You know, it just, it's got to go through the council here, especially especially when you're talking about, you know, I think that change of change our request was 60. And, and the, the mention here of liquidated damages is that has that discussion happened with the contractor yet, or has that been just at this? No, it's it's we've had a discussion about it. Um, you know, and they they will certainly push back and have to some extent talking about just the supply chain issues and the yeah. fact that it's 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 happening all over, um, especially with switch gear and to a significant extent, the MCC stuff. But that'll continue to, you know, one of the things that we also kind of talked about is this is, you know, they kind of pushed out their offer. You know, it's, it's yeah. a little like buying a car, if you know what I mean. There's there's some give and take, and we've got some cards to play too, and we'll continue to negotiate that. Okay. Do you have a question in the uh, proposal? And it's under the maintenance and operation cost. Um, you know, to bring it, it's one paragraph to talk about provisions for maintenance and operation, but uh, and it may not happen. But you know, should a pump have to be replaced, um, the company we choose is that the type of thing that they will fix within that contract, or or is that if they want to send it to a third party? And then we have to pay for that repair of the pump or replacement of components, or do they handle it internally with the company that we choose? Well, I think any major repairs they're not gonna they're not gonna be able to do. You know, and they might have an allowance. There's different ways to handle those repair costs. But if a, a pump or a motor needs to be 
rebuilt, for example, right. I, I think they're going to they're going to send that out because they just. That'd be, that'd be a city expense. If well, again, they'll probably have some sort of repair allowance, right? Yeah. That they'll be able to use for, you know, maybe a capacitor goes out of a motor and, you know, they'll plug that in. But if it's if it's rebuilding or something yeah if it's a significant cost that's going to come back to the city okay and again you you do have you know that correction period or that warranty period for the contract if something happens in the first couple of years then we would probably look to that first sure. Sure. but if if you know there are certain things that that won't cover too you know if it's yeah most most um Pump manufacturers have pretty tightly controlled distribution chains. So even if you choose shop A to repair your pump, parts all got to come through the authorized channel and then there's markups and stuff. So usually it's kind of like your car, except there's no aftermarket parts. You have to take it back to the dealer. Sometimes you get around that, but not usually. Pretty specialized stuff. Yeah. <clears throat> I think, yeah. All right, thanks. I did pass out a copy of that RFP. We'll get to that later in the agenda, but people kind of want to prove that there's a lot of data in that um, for the, uh, the contractor to, contractors to digest. Should we move on to the um, contracts two and three, yeah. sewer collection conveyance? Um, contractor continues to uh, work. On site right now, they have three crews. Uh, the biggest effort is continues to be the deep sewer on Second Avenue or on First Avenue. Um, they're installing maybe 150 feet of sewer pipe a day. Um, you know, over the last couple of weeks, they've been installing sewer from 15 to 20 feet deep. Um, they're nearing the lower end of that range, and then they'll start to gain a little depth as they as they head head north to Fourth Street. Um, but uh, it's you know slow going, but it's steady and um, the materials are excellent in terms of you know it's just sand. Uh, the problem with digging through sand is <laughs> you know the the slopes of the trenches don't stand up, so they're pulling boxes to you know minimize that, and it just it's a lot of material to to move and and, and install back and. Well, I think you're kind of through the big one. They're through the biggest one. Yeah. Yeah. They'll be kind of deep there on that corner right where I live. It will be. But uh, otherwise, it, you, know, you got a couple of big culverts there. Yeah. That'll take care of Jerusalem. So they're making good progress there. Um, you're all aware yeah. that we shut down Minnesota Avenue. Minnesota Avenue, there's three crossings that or four crossings that were done basically Second Street, Third Street. 5th Street and 6th Street. Um, they finished 5th Street crossing today, so all of the utility work is complete. Um, and they do have um, some gravel in those, at least for one way, one lane. If, if you know emergency vehicle has to get through, they can get through at this point. Um, they are tentatively planning to pave those back on Thursday. Um, so hopefully by Thursday night, they're black and it's open, but might be Friday too. Is that all six places on Minnesota? Or just four? four. Just the four? Oh, yeah, yeah. No, they're, I think they're going to do all of them. Yeah, because there's two, two others that were done under traffic closer to Hunter Street. So I think there's six or seven patches and all they'll do. And um, Plus the, no. That's three, two. Southeast? Oh, there's more than that even. Um, you know, there's, I think there's. They're putting the curb in this morning or this afternoon, so. Yeah, yeah. I think there's one over in Herbwood Hills. There's one in Cedar Woodlands. Um, there's one on Second Avenue. There's a, there's a, quite a number of. Just for the one day then? One or two days, I, I don't know which. I hope. Longer the better. I think we'll keep them as long as they they'll stay. They're just gonna put asphalt, not concrete, back. Yeah, it's a bituminous road, so we'll match, match with bituminous. 
Mm -hmm. But they're pretty thick patches. They're five, five or six inch patches, so it takes some time. Um, so that part is going well. We had hoped to have that open by the 19th of July, and it looks like we'll beat that date. Um, but it's been dry. Um, we haven't missed anything for really rain days, honestly. So uh, in addition to the three crews, well, yeah, so that really kind of, that, that's where Fitzgerald's forces are are working at this point. Um, they'll continue down 5th Street uh, with one crew, 5th Street Southwest. On the west side of Minnesota Avenue, there's that sanitary sewer there that goes to that one end, or the to the west, that dead end block. There's four homes back there that are going to have a pretty tough access situation because there's no other way in or out of there. Uh, and that's a wet area of town where the groundwater is a problem. And so um, that will probably go in fairly slow. Um, and then there's there's a, also some sanitary sewer on the east side of Minnesota Avenue and, and uh, a few other spots there I'm looking at over the next couple of weeks. But they'll continue on 1st Street Southeast and 5th Street and then um, a few other miscellaneous spots, there's segments of sanitary sewer installed. So um, they'll continue at that. The other big thing that happened is on July 10th, Monday, um, Ellingson showed up as we expected. Um, and was well, in the notice, um, they're installing grinder pumps um, and directional drilling, um, sanitary sewer, force main, and in many cases, the water services, they're pulling them with them. So. Um, it hasn't been painless, but it does appear that property owners have been able to contact Ellingson and or Fitzgerald and um, negotiate a price to pull their water service with a sanitary sewer force main. And so they're up there. I think they're doing about, so what they are doing is they, they, they auger in and drop in the grinder station and they're directional drilling the force main. Uh, they're not, um, they're not uh, making any of those systems live. They're not connecting the home to the grinder station and they're not impacting the existing septic systems. They've all, all got to be left in place until the wastewater treatment facility is live. But they're essentially getting the components in place so that process goes quickly or more quickly. And it looks like they're doing about four properties a day. So they, they've got a pretty good amount of staff on hand and that is moving well. And uh, so far, so good. Well, the, the main force mains down there, are they making the connection into that? So there's curb stops okay. uh, and they will be making those connections. Yep. Okay. But not, not at the house or to the grinder station. They're just yeah. directional drilling it from the curb stop to past the grinder station. Uh, and then they'll tie tie together the sewer and water at you know in in at the boulevard. So um, pumps installed with the stations or the pumps separate from? No, they're all one unit. So they're monolithic units. Uh, in fact, I believe they're you know that's how they come. I don't yeah, think that the there's come out for service. They do, know. but I think yeah, it's just one. Trucked here, one assembled unit. Um, so that's kind of the scoop. Um, so the property owners left those, there's gonna be a pile of dirt next to the grinder station and they leave that pile of the dirt so they have something to backfill the um, septic tank once it's pumped and collapsed. And uh, there's some rec some disturbance to the existing grass, but they're gonna have to come back over that all with a track vehicle to finish the installation. So that's not gonna be restored at this point. And then there's of course a hole where the curb stop was that they'll make that connection and they'll finish and, and backfill all that. But you know that's what the disturbance is gonna be. At the grinder station, they do backfill the grinder stations up to a certain level 
Um, but there's about, I'd say on average, six to 10 inches around the um, 24 inch grinder station that goes up, and that's there, that uh, they've covered with a piece of geotextile fabric and they've stapled it into the ground around it. And so we're kind of looking at that and you know they've marked it, but I, I'm a little wary about how safe that is or isn't. Um, so we're gonna have a discussion with the contractor about that, but we just kind of came across that issue today. Yeah, well, there's supposed to be a lid, right? <laughs> there is a lid and that's on. It's just that they don't want to fill that, you know, that because the auger is like three feet in the oh and the see, yeah, so there's 24, a, yeah. 27 inch outside diameter. So there's a, a void and they don't want to fill that void in until um they dig down and excavate for their connection. <laughs> um uh, so they 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 are they they are you know they place concrete around the bottom in in dry form basically sackcrete for ballast and then they backfill with p rock up to a certain level but that certain level is the invert of the incoming pipe so that makes sense um I'm sorry you were talking about the uh, the road closure south of the bridge perhaps being at the end of schedule for July 19th to reopen. Am I understanding that correctly? Um, the schedule that we put out in the resident update was that we expected it to be open by July 19th and we're hoping to have it open by the end of the week. Okay. So we're a little, a bit, we, the contractor is a little ahead of schedule, assuming things go as planned and we all know that they don't. <laughs> So then my my question then leads to, because then we're going to move to north of the bridge, right? Do we have a time frame on when those closures are going to happen? No. Yeah. Probably, <clears throat> it'll probably be a while. Oh, okay. The more notice we can give residents, obviously the better. And um, I've heard comments that was helpful to have that in the newsletter. So if we can get that timed for the newsletter. Too. Yeah, we will absolutely. We we yeah. always do. Yeah, so it'll definitely be after gold rush. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Um the proposed oh, is Ellington gonna continue on or are they gonna Work through until they're done now? Are they here to stay? I think they're here to stay. Okay. Um, Good. They're pretty no indication they're going to leave, I guess. No. The, the kind of the sticking point there is, is that they're working in areas where there's not a lot of rock right now. Um, once things get rocky, um, they're not excavating rock. They're not open trenching anything. Uh, that's when Fitzgerald has to get involved and so we'll see how that coordination process goes. Um, and if Fitzgerald's able to assemble a fourth crew to do that type of work, mm -hmm. or if they're gonna, you know, I'm not excited about them pulling one of their utility crews in downtown out of here to do that. So, you know, that'll have to be a discussion point. Obviously it's, it's their choice, but um, they've got a completion date to meet too, so. <clears throat> uh, item three, the proposed Timberline Drive sanitary sewer config change configuration. I did meet again with uh, the property owner on Timberline about potentially um, rerouting that piece of sanitary sewer rather than in front of their house under the culverts through the rock kind of going around their house um, to the north. And uh, We've met with the property owner. We've kind of staked it out and kind of tried to continue to work with them. We'll, we'll see where that goes. I'm guardedly optimistic we'll come to some resolution there. Um, I've talked to them. One of the things that we'd have to do is take about eight or nine trees in the backyard. And uh, one of the things that I kind of said is we can 
pay you something for the easement. There's already a drainage easement there, but we would have to probably buy a utility easement on top of the drainage easement. So the value of that's not very probably significant, but um, one of the things we could do is, you know, that there's a um, pathway that, you, yeah, the city owned outlots to the west of this property. There's supposed to be a pathway someday, you know, the mm -hmm. contract is bringing in. And so one thing that they might want, I was thinking we could maybe offer to uh, plant some trees in the city's outlot so that would screen between the pathway and their house, kind of in exchange for the trees we're yeah. taking. Uh, um, the something to think the about. Is, is the west edge of the house is about seven feet from their lot line. Uh, I don't know. We're or thinking about is, the same house. Because I have a site drawing showing where the house is supposed to be. And the house is like 35 feet from the west edge of the property. What they submitted for approval and what they actually built, they moved the house to the west within seven feet because of all the drain pipes, culverts. Oh, that's why they moved it. So they really don't have that much. But the trees in the outlaw might be good, but that's that's a thought. But just just reminder, their lot ends right about seven feet from the edge of the west house. Yeah, yeah. I guess I. I uh, I didn't plot that out, or I, I guess I didn't notice yeah, I that. I'll show you some time. <laughs> but it, you know, on any anyway, that that was my thought. That might be a nice trade off oh, to kind of. So I don't know so if we can come out of our contingent fund then. I don't. Where else we come from? Yeah, we would have to. Yeah. Okay. Um, hey, do you have time. a program where you're planning? Are you getting any trees from the DNR that you could plant on that? Uh, we're getting some trees through a Emerald Ash Board grant specifically for Ornoco Park. Oh, so uh, separate. Not a not an option. Not an option. Okay. What's the what's what's the root issue that the homeowners are requesting oh. rerouting? Well they're not. See, um there's a at the low point of Timberline Drive, there's two big culverts, right? Three big culverts, three 54 inch culverts, I think, or maybe one's 60 and the other two are 54. And uh, we've got to get from where the sanitary sewer heads kind of um, to the south, if you will, crossing Timberline Drive uh, to the lift station that services the Timberline Drive res residents. And we planned a directional drill that um, in the front of their house under the, under the edge of the road. And uh, when we dug that up and they started drilling it, they hit rock. And so there's about two feet of rock that has to come out. And so to take that two feet of rock out, you take the culverts out, you take the entire road out, and there's no access there to get people in and out. And the culverts would be expensive to remove and replace. And it's just, it, it all kind of sucks, right? Um, it would be very disruptive to open cut that. And so we kind of looked at an alternative is to kind of go to the north to behind their house and then to the west and then connect to the main. It's a little bit farther, but the cuts are much shallower and uh, there's really nothing in the way except for nine trees. And uh, it just seems like it's a whole lot easier and, and less disruptive <laughs> for, for them because they, they'd lose half their driveway um, and a bunch of their trees in the front. And it just is an, it seems like a better option for the city and for the property owner. And that's why we're pursuing it. And if, if, if they don't want us to do that, or we can't get the easement, then, then we'll open cut it, but it won't be pretty. That'll be a seven foot trench probably. No, way deeper than that. I mean, the, for the for the pipe. I mean, thirty. Deep. It's deep. It's really deep. deep. Deep, deep. Not probably thirty, but I bet you twenty. It's all twenty. Really, all it's those deep. people on Timberline won't have access. They'd have to park down west of where we're talking about, 
hike in every day. So, what, that, rather be two weeks? Two weeks? At least. That's that's a big deal. Got to water those culverts. Not hammer out the rock that deep. Put the culvert back, rebuild the road. It's not a trivial exercise. Um, the way it was, could they go up? No, it was planned to directional drill it. Um, but we found rock in the middle of that. When we dug the main in, there was no rock um, that it connects to, which is deeper than everything else, you know. And could be a crazy idea. Um, could we have them um, have a path for them to go up through that field at 43 acres from the uh, where the uh, um, off of Second Avenue across from the hardwood lumber yard? They go up through the field and they come at the end of the cul-de-sac at Timberline Drive. They could if we we could yeah. negotiate that, I guess. And it was dry. And uh, yeah, there's a whole bunch of ifs, but yeah. Um, hopefully, we'll work something out with the property owner and not have to do any of that. Um, that's that would be a plan B, I guess. Um, that's not the desired outcome. No, it's not the greatest, but. Um, and that that's a long way, and the slopes are steep, and you know, yeah. yeah. And which is it? The property owner on the north side of the street, or the south? It is the north side of the street. Seven, and they're 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 nice people, and they've been receptive to it, but they're cautious, which is reasonable. Yeah. So I, I've met with them a couple times, and you know, they, they're they're busy too, and. Okay, let's just gotta just, continue yeah. to work through that. Is there a time frame as far as getting that done? Oh, why not? Within a couple months or not? Well, weeks or... it'll be one of the last things that gets done on the project. Um, but it needs to get done this fall. Sure. So that means we need to, you know, walk through this process. And uh, if the contractor, you know, they'll have to purchase a manhole. And we'd have to execute an easement and do some things like that. So okay. it can be done. It's just going to take <clears throat> some effort. But we have a little time. Um, we will release a uh, construction update. Uh, the last one was on June 30th. Um, and the next one will be Friday. I think what is it, Friday 14th? So. And the, and that of course will provide all the updates uh, for any upcoming impacts. You know, I think we're gonna see much of the same with the exception of Minnesota Avenue should be opened up. And I don't at this point in time see any huge impacts. Um, but that'll continue to evolve. There's some there's some difficult areas to, to work through yet, but we'll continue to work through that. Um, Fitzgerald does have a pay request. Um, that pay request is pretty significant. They've done a lot of work in the last month. The pay request totals seven hundred and sixty-seven thousand forty-two dollars and nineteen cents. Seven sixty-seven. Seven sixty seven zero four two point one nine. Um, a couple things. The sanitary sewer televisor has been in you remember we have within the contract there's they're supposed to tell clean and televise all the existing mains um and as they do that they've uncovered some issues um we found oh, a handful of manholes that are just buried right so they were never raised up so they're unaccessible um or they don't have a casting on them they're just a steel plate um, covered with dirt um, found some 
mains plugged with grease and different things like that. Um, those things are getting taken care of. We will, the intent is to pay the contractor just under bid unit prices to adjust the structure so they're accessible in the future and they have castings on them and, you know, silly things like that get addressed. Um, we came across one issue, Kane probably knows more about it than I do on um, Alona Lane, Southwest and Riverwood Hills 4. Uh, there's a sanitary sewer main uh, kind of extending through the woods off of that. I think that's a cul-de-sac, isn't it? Uh, it uh, goes south off of Riverwood Drive towards Alona Lane in through the woods. And uh, it's a uh, eight inch Y fitting that has dropped significantly. And so the jetter couldn't go through it because of this offset. So the camera couldn't go through. So there's about 200 feet of sewer line that is not jetted and not televised yet. So we need to fix this Y, dig down and fix it, which it's only three feet down. So it should be fairly simple to, to dig it up, but- uh, Sanitary sewer isn't supposed to be three feet deep, by the way. Right, right. So- you know why it froze? Remember we had that cold spell? Didn't they freeze over there? Their septic and stuff? I would be surprised if the sanitary sewer, the septic, I, I, I don't know. I guess I don't remember that. I'd be surprised if sanitary sewer rolls through the woods, even if it, even then, but do you remember? It did not freeze, no. I, I think what happened with at installation, it just wasn't done properly. They could have done a better job. So the, the sewer pipes are fine. They're up here, but the Y fitting is down here. It's just. I don't even know how that could happen, honestly. And it's, and it's a, uh, it's a Fermico style fitting is what it is. Oh, that's It's, it's not a glued it. PVC fitting. So it's not a Y, it's a... A T, uh, whatever. We cut in a T somehow. And yeah. They could squeeze an extra two lots in right there. And so they, they got the Sharpie out and do this. Yeah. So uh, that really needs to be fixed. You know, the, that's on Riverwood Drive. The, the the main is under Riverwood Drive. No, the main is through the woods as well. Oh, man. Is that going to be accessible for a little mini? For a mini, yep. They already, Fitzgerald already to take the mini through there to find these manholes since they were buried so deep. They've never been exposed. So. And Fitzgerald really has been good about stuff like that. You know, it's not in their contract to really do that. We will have to pay for it. But they've been reasonable about doing that type of thing for us to facilitate the jetting. So that's something they did. No, they don't. No, it's not their fault. Um, it's Patrick. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's something that needs to be um, fixed. You know, I don't, I'm a little hesitant to whether we want to fix that and take ownership of that at this point in time um, or not. You know, that might be something that we just. Is it the is it the homeowners association issue or is it still private developer? Good question. I don't know that I can answer that. Let the lawyers figure it out. I I prefer I not to. I prefer just to for, to fix it, but I don't know that I want to fix it before we. We're operating it, you know what I mean? So I'm wondering if it should just wait till late this fall. But the, what we find from the televised is that's for our city benefit because we're taking it over. So yeah. it's a matter of, I don't know, having Fitzpatrick to fix it is kind of, that's not going to happen. That's, yeah. that's a moody. not going to happen. So, happen. so, so at least we know about it. And so, but yet if we run, if we have Jason Ottman go over and fix it, all of a sudden Jason's working on Fitzpatrick's sewer. Yeah. That's the, that's that's not the concern. Well either. Does Fitzpatrick still operate the, the treatment system? Yeah. Still yeah. clear. Right. No. <laughs> 
He's pledging checks. I, I, contractor said all of the tanks and stuff, everything's full. Five of them, at least. Not just there. Oh. They're all full. At River Park, too. What I've been told. So, anyway, I guess I, I would be, let's let's keep it in our back pocket and fix it this fall, I think, unless you guys want to look at it differently. My take on it was, is Fitzgerald's here, they got all their equipment here, they got guys here. I thought to benefit us and get this completed and off of our list, so just have them do it, but now what you guys are talking makes sense to take they will still do it, right? I mean, it's just yeah. when when do they do it? Once we take ownership of the sewer, that'd probably be our best bet. So if there is a if there is a clog, that's going to be where we look. You know, if there's a so it's marked, it's located. We can wait till the fall. So if we call him, by the way, wants to, and I returned his call, but I never heard back from Dan. It's Patrick? Yeah. Um, is there any is there any financial uh, <laughs> component to that transfer of ownership for the sewer system? We're going to talk about that here in a few minutes. Okay. Decommissioning. Just be aware of it. I guess we'll just go Yeah, I, I agree. I wouldn't touch it until we own it. Okay. Yeah, somebody else. It's crappy. We also and we, has that, that way, me, has it kind of it, have they been able to come up, up to either side of it with their camera? They they just attempted it from the street side. The other side's up in the woods. They can't get their truck to it. So so this is a is this going to be a septic system we're going to pick up? So we're not going to be going connecting up there, are we? It's just a sewer line that runs from oh, it's just a, sewer a couple line. manholes that connect additional houses. So okay, let's wait. Right, uh, separate, but if, regarding that same uh, project, jetting and televising, um, heard from a couple of neighbors that we had some some folks had some water. Yeah, they had some well, there's three yeah. homes that had water. We talked about this in May or June. Yeah, what did we ever track down? What was the call? Um talking with the um the jetter company and engineering and it sounded like the houses aren't vented properly. That's kind of what I was, was pushing air through and uh it might that. have been some operator issues there too. Too high pressure. Yeah. Is the one one it family sounded more one like family was aware. Air. Issue with the water issue, and that would be venting. But and the one family said there was some issues with venting in the house too already. So that's the way it was constructed. So we haven't done anything. And those are the only three I'm aware of, unless you've heard others. Uh some people's traps just went dry. Yeah, you know, mine, mine went dry. It was like just sucked everything out. So. And then you get the sewer gas. So exactly. people call and we just said run water, turn every faucet on, every fill up your floor drains, it'll go away. Thank you. Sure. Uh manuals. Stuff. Yeah, the RFQ and cost proposal for the wastewater treatment. Um system operation, maintenance and management um, is the next item on the agenda. I did include some information about uh, the tentative schedule. You'll notice the meeting is, uh, the pre-submission meeting is tomorrow and the site tour starting at 10 a.m. Uh, we're supposed to get the questions from the uh, respondents by the 24th of July and then uh, we will respond to them over the next week. Uh, they need to submit their RFQ by the end of the month, July 34th, 31st uh, at four o'clock. Um, then we'll schedule, schedule some interviews 
And notice that the interviews are on August 8th and 9th. Uh, August 8th, I think, is the Sewer and Water Committee meeting. Correct, Sunny? Yes. And we thought that this might be a reasonable um, group to participate in that. Um, and yeah, yeah. And so uh, I assume we'll maybe talk about that with the council too and make sure that, that that's okay. Right, and I think we, we kind of had talked about having the joint kind of we meeting could. with this committee and council. So council can ultimately make a decision when it comes with. The interviews are probably, you know, as important as anything, you know, to make sure that it's a good fit with the city and their um, philosophy and processes are aligned with what the city wants to do. Um, it's a presentation so that the and <clears throat> slash interview. So that's at the August 15th meeting then? No, uh, on the August 8th and 9th. 8th and 9th. Okay. Yep. And then the following uh, August 15th is the city council meeting uh, that we would select a respondent. Okay. Um, and then we would, you know, negotiate the agreement uh, and then hopefully execute an agreement with the, the, uh, the contractor at a special council meeting on, on approximately September 5th. Uh, thinking that we want them on board and under contract for the commissioning of the wastewater treatment facility uh, scheduled for uh, September to mid-October and then the startup. I just kind of pick some midpoint dates there of mid-October. So that's kind of what we're targeting in terms of the schedule. Uh, the RFP, I, I think I handed out copies of that. Uh, in conjunction with the RFP, I set up an FTP site that conveyed, I think, 18 documents or a lot of information, construction documents, feasibility reports, um, projected O&M costs, all kinds of good information that they will um, find useful. Um, you know, as we prepped the RFQ, we kind of talked about the cost component. And I think the cost component is difficult for the contractors to put their finger on. You know, there's no history of the facility, you know, so, and, and the flows are going to, you know, change and increase over time uh, fairly rapidly initially. Uh, and so, it'd be difficult for them to estimate chemical use and electrical use and things like that since until there's kind of a baseline for the facility. So, um, you know, there might be some sort of allowance or true up phase that will ultimately include in the contract. I know we included costs and we do want labor costs, but there are some other things that we're thinking that they're going to have to estimate, but, you know, uh, and, and we're going to have to, um, Cover costs and you can be fair with them at the end of the day. But you know, we, we also wanted to see what their best guess is, estimate is on what it's going to cost to run the facility. Is there a term of the proposed agreement? Yeah, the term is three years with an option for two two year extensions at the city's at the city's option. Um, we'll see what they say about that too. You know, they might. I know Peoples, for example, likes a five-year term, or I believe they do, and they usually push for that. But hopefully, at least at the onset, until we establish a working relationship, you know, we thought three years was reasonable. So with these MC panels and Gilmore Electric getting everything wired up, uh, there is potential for the commissioning to shift. So would that be... Any consideration taken? Maybe we don't need to decide that until early August when everything's come in. But the September fifth, the eleventh, the commissioning dates. Yep. No, all could move ship. back. Well, sure. Yep. And I do 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 talk about that within the RF 
be at least within some of the text we added that there's a discussion about that piece. Mm -hmm. um, just trying to be upfront with them and let them know. Well, we learned more today too. We did, and we'll learn more sure. next month. And yeah. you know how it is. So it's yeah. not good. We can tell what we know. Yeah, I, I guess that could change again. We don't know. Yeah, until we see the the panels. So you see the truck in the yard, you don't know. So that's the scoop with that. Anything to add there? Sunny, anything for you, from your perspective? No, I, I, I think, you know, it is an aggressive uh, schedule, but um, it's also open to flexing a bit because it is new and exciting. And, uh, but I, I think we're doing our best in terms of having been, you know, I've been in contact throughout. And then um, I, I think it'll, it'll be an interesting see what their responses are when they come back. And and Dylan, it might be even helpful for you. You know, I didn't get this to you earlier because we were pressed for time and um no, that's, that's fine. you were to kind of do up some numbers, you know, what two you... two guys I work with actually used to be people service employees. So they know the operation pretty well. So I just ask them they take the bet. Yeah, yeah. Veolia, I think, is a little, uh, they're a large, obviously, but uh, regionally, I don't think they've got as much. Uh, more up north. And yeah, yeah. People service has quite a, quite a few locally. Yeah, they are. Yeah. I, I would um, just go, if I could just ask one question <laughs> on, the, on Roman numeral number four. Are we, is the committee then um, of a consensus that we're not going to touch that until we go on it? Were touch you, what, I'm sorry. Were you going to take oh, any no. action yeah. on that or not? Or just, no. just curious. We'll follow up. We have another meeting, more April, first week in April, August, I'm sorry. I hope we're not having a meeting today, April. Yeah. <laughs> It's still very fluid, so I don't think we can really. Oh, on that Alona Lane Southwest? No, uh, that one we're going to leave for now. Okay. Just because it's Fitzpatrick's, we don't want to really. Right. I just wanted to make sure that that yeah, I, I was know. understanding it correctly, because I know you stated it that it would. Um, don't touch it, but well, the consensus is just table for future or table action, yeah. right? Okay. Yep. Don't touch it. Sorry, I'm big sure the minutes reflect that. Traffic. Anything else on the schedule? Um, of course, part of the contract with Stop is to provide all the manuals and everything that it takes to operate. So that's been discussed with them already, so that's the expectation. Okay. Uh, nothing else, the decommissioning six. Sunny can give us an update on the decommissioning letter to the developers. Well, I kind of have, uh, it's, Mike and I are missing each other on, on that connecting on that. Um, and now it sounds like the time frame is still in flux, so we'll we'll continue to push on that. And like I say, um, Dan Fitzpatrick has contacted me, so that's he's two out of the three, right? So he probably wants to sign paperwork tomorrow. Yeah. Steve <laughs> Jack Jack Journey or Journey. Yeah. Oh, I found out today too that as a, an aside, um, Ornoco State's MPDS permit expires on December 31st. 
Hmm. So they're anxious to make sure that we take their wastewater. <laughs> <laughs> and that's not, I mean, we operated under an expired permit for five years. It's just, that's true. You just can't do it. You can't make any big changes under an expired permit. You can keep doing what you're doing and just can't really change anything. Uh, and that is true, but do you, it's expired not by action of the city of Rochester or any other city. It's a function of the inaction of PCA to process the permits, isn't it? Um, some of that and some, uh, you know, they're, they go through the rulemaking process and there's, you know, permit limits and things that right. they're considering they're not changing. Even, they're yeah. not ready to make. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and rather than renew it, you just operate under your existing permit as it's just expired. Yeah. Um, so, you know, since we're talking about the uh, private systems, is there expected to be any financial component to those transfers of ownership? Not that I'm aware of. No. Not okay. the way the development agreement. Nobody are. pays anybody. <laughs> We're not expecting, the city isn't expecting anything, but we don't know. That's why I'm I'm a little nervous about waiting any longer, uh, sending the letter out because it's only, we know for sure, well, I shouldn't say for sure, but the October date is, could be one October, could be 10 November, but it is coming. Um, and just that initial awareness is important for Cedar Woodlands, Fitzpatrick, Steve Jack, Oracle Estates. I think it's good to get that documented out there. So, um, so what happens with that decommissioning? So, like with Fitzpatrick stuff, we go in, and <laughs> fill it, or back or whatever it happens, right? You decommission it, but then does he still own that land and property? City owns it. City owns it at the time. Well, city owns it now, but Cedar Woodlands doesn't. We own it. We actually pay taxes on it and we actually have insurance on it. We own the land. We see, we're right. talking the, the, the homeowners HOA. association. Okay. Right. That was sold to us. You're one of the exceptions to that. All, so of the, the, all the rest of them are owned by. That's what I was worried about. It's like Fitzpatrick owned it. That's what I was afraid of. Okay, but he doesn't. The no. city owns that land. Same with River Park, that whole okay. drainage so field. That whole area. Yes. That we own it. Yes. Okay. Got it. No, that, that was, I was afraid of that, but especially when you said he called. And okay. the city bears all costs associated with the decommissioning and everything. And we give them, I think, like a week, a week's window where we have to give them notification if they want to salvage, you know, certain components after it's, you know, the flow is diverted. Yeah. They have a certain amount of time. And, you know, if you want to salvage a pump, take it out. But after that point, if you don't take it out, we're going to take it out. And, uh, you know, the, at that point, it's the contractors. Um, so the electrical equipment, you know, the tanks get pumped, uh, the biosolid gets disposed of, the electrical um, mechanical components come out and probably get landfilled and thus they have value to the contractor. And then the tanks get collapsed and filled. That saves Patrick money. He would have to pay for that otherwise. Yes. Uh, yes. That's so, what I'm saying. So he, he would to want that. to do that. Yeah. Us to do that. Yeah. And then the drain fields, the cleanouts get cut off below grade and just buried. <clears throat> Except he can't send you a bill or anybody that's, a bill. That's that's right. Yeah. Anyway. Right. So, yeah. Okay. So Cedar Woodlands, because you own that. Drain field. There's that. I guess there is a possibility you could sell it to whatever future landowner is for the. Yeah, we got a call from somebody who wants to develop that area, and that lets us know we wanted if we would sell it. So I think we have a drainage and utility easement over that. On the west. And so side. that's why we can abandon the drain field, yeah. and we I think we actually. Um, easement along own or purchase where own own an easement or own the land uh, where the, the lift station will be. So yeah. now that I think that through again. So yeah. 
So, but yeah, I think I told him to call you because why would, I don't know if you guys want that, but it's valuable to the developer and it's probably not that valuable to you guys. So. Okay, in the middle. Yeah, get what you can out of it. It would be much better for their plan. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can they build on top of that after you decommission it? Is there any rules? You no, can't. At least they shouldn't. Okay. They they it, they can, but they should dig it up, do all the remediation, and do any room. If that's what they know, but they had I'd seen some drawings of like where they have one of the components. Of, but I wasn't sure if you could build on top of that after you. For sure, I want to take out the tile, and then if there's any remediation, you know, I. I I really want to test the soil, but I doubt that there's any issue there um, with that one. And then recompact it, of course. So there's some effort there. Okay. Anything else? Okay, commissioning. Next item is uh, something we've been talking about off and on. In your packet of information, there was two pieces of paper. One regards 51020, which is a water, water connection, and 51021, which is the connection to the city sewer system. Uh, and I've highlighted the language in red, which identifies the, uh, in the case of the sewer, it shall be connected to the city sewer system within one year after connection to the operational sewer system becomes available. And that's the old 21. The other one is old 20. And right now it's written by connecting to the city water system on or before July 31st, 2014. So, we need to update that one with whatever time frame or for any new developments or for any new any new connections. So um, our discussion in the past several meetings, nothing recently, but it was the idea of mm -hmm. extending that. Yeah. One year, or I'm sorry, you didn't even copy me. That's good. That's good. Now we're getting a little bit closer to when we're actually going to have operational sewer system, but October, November, whatever the case may be. Um, We've had some discussion about extending that to a two year or 24 months, putting a month on it versus a date or versus a year. That's something the committee would like to consider doing or recommend the council or the PNZ, I guess. Now is the time we should probably do that to get the, the process going with public hearing and updates and that. Time frame. And so tentatively right now it's that October 16th, right? So assuming that schedule holds, which it won't, that would be the start date. So October right 16th, 2024. Through September 16th. Which if you look at a construction season, there's not much left there of 2023. Yeah, pretty much everything's we're allowing take place basically next year. one system to and have 220 plus systems. <clears throat> yeah. March or April through October of next year. So that's up for comments, discussion. I know at our public hearings, at one of our public information meetings, it's just like, yeah, this is a request for 24 or two years, but well, I mean, 
you said earlier they're doing four homes a day water and sewer connections right well they're they are um but they're not complete they'll have to come back and finish them yeah because the plant's not live right had the plant been live though they could have had the wiring electrical and everything else was done yeah they're, they're, <laughs> the, you know they're doing maybe 50 percent of the work right um so there's maybe even less than 50 percent of the work so there's a decent amount of work that still is left there with the pumping abandonment of the septic system and then the physical connections from the house to the grinder station and from the grinder station to the force main and then the electrical piece and then the site restoration. So a few pieces of, you know, there's some work there, definitely. Um, if somebody, somebody has some sort of special situation um, is there a process to request a variance uh, or an extension to that for an additional 12 months or something on a on a case by case basis? Or would it be basically just pay your your fee for that 12 months? Well, there's there's there there is a no link. variance process that yeah. is in the ordinance. There could be. And what are we expecting the the fee? The sewer uh, sack fee, right? Sewer accessibility charge. There's a late fee, and that's like seventy-five dollars. Seventy-five dollars a month. Seventy-five dollars a month for for not hooking up. Mm -hmm. What's a what's our typical sewer bill expected to be? <coughs> Fifty to seventy-five dollars. Thirty-five to forty-five, probably. We want it to be the, you know we want it to be the yeah be an incentive right. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's you don't want it to be cheaper or as cheap than connecting, so that's the yeah. thought process here. So, the counter to leaving it where it's at is we um, the counter to that is just leaving it one year and having everybody connect as soon as possible um, and not let it go two years. Go two years, we're not getting our. Um, Maximum use of user rates to help furnish the plan. But somewhere there's a balance between a lot of penalties or uh, having more users pick them out on two, on two we, years. You could you could cut that rate, that seventy-five dollar rate in half, and make up your user costs yeah. right there. Yeah. And and that that fee would be less punitive then. And it would be more a reflection of um, the, the actual cost the city's incurring by not having you hooked up for that right. individual property. Who's, the, who's paying for the cost of tracking all that and collecting all that? The city? City cost, yeah. So there's that component of the two, I guess. Yeah. Because to me, that's like the pain in the butt. Yeah. 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 Like, okay, who didn't pay? Who's, who, yeah. who didn't hook up? Like you little a master little checkboard and, uh, and then you gotta collect the fee. And if they don't pay the fee, then there's a late fee on the late fee. That's all like a mess. So you know, comparison to our water system that we had right now, we had a five-year period that you could hook up. And there was a handful of people that didn't hook up. And there's still three or four that are paying the foot the seventy-five dollar fee since 2015. And that usually ends up going on their uh, property taxes. At the end of the year, the council uh, comes up, the city staff comes to us to the council with the fee of here's $1,300, $1,700, or whatever it is that goes on to the property tax bill. They don't pay it by the end of December of the year. So, so yes, we're, we're reducing that to one year, or maybe two years. But at the same time, we've got a huge investment sitting there versus what we have with the water system. And we got to pay our loans back to the PFA. So we don't want to be, so we run the risk of not meeting our our loans, but at the same time, is, is that, we're trying to, trying to work with our residents as well. And that's a real risk. I'm just, just uh, from a financial point of view, cash flow. Mm -hmm. okay. And to counter that, cash flow concern or cash flow analysis is our um, using a CIP funds for some of that shortcoming, but we're hopeful that 
because when you bring on the developments, uh, River Park, Cedar Woodlands, Riverwood Hills, we're picking up over 220 users right away, immediately. So it's going to help offset well, some of our additional stations, right? And grinder stations, right? and grinder grinder stations yeah. yeah. And Oronoco States. And Oronoco States. So there's, there's risk there, but it's not as bad as <clears throat> having 200 individuals. Let me ask a question. Instead of keep moving the date, like this July 31st, like, we don't know when the thing's going to be live yet, right? No. So can we just say by December 31st of 2024, you have to be hooked up? Obviously, you're not going to be probably digging and doing this in December. So the, the if reality... it comes live end of October or if it gets pushed to November, you still give them a year. Yeah, the reality is that we will we send them a letter that says right. sewer and water is available to your parcel. You have a year to connect. And that letter goes into a spreadsheet, you know, they it gets documented. So that's how we track it. But not everybody's on the same schedule. So then why do we have to have the date in there in the in the actual shouldn't be in there? Okay. So that because I just keep it at one year and then when yeah. you get your letter, and then you don't have to worry about this date, because a year for one person might like you, know, you said the October and a year for somebody else might be a different date. And the other thing that we've kind of made the decision on is we're not sending that letter out until you have both sewer and water for people that are getting both sewer and water because you're gonna do both at the same time. You're gonna do both at the same time. So it's not fair to give you two different deadlines. Yeah. So we made that kind of that decision. Not that affects most people. In fact it doesn't, but it affects some people. It's hundred nine water and sewer. Something like that. Users, new water users, I should say. To the 386 we have now. And there um, and there are options to help people financially if necessary. We're working with some people and there may be um that other grant application was opening up Is that the end of this month. The one that Caitlin's working on, that's for um, the SWCD to essentially replenish their pot of money to Bannon Wells up to 50% cost participation or $1,450 or whatever that number was. That would be my, I, mean, I think a year is fine. Um, but I think from my perspective, carrots, carrots work better than sticks, right? So, um, you know, and especially if somebody's already having some, uh, you know, cost issues with the project, a $75 fee isn't going to make it happen any faster, right? And so I, I think uh, connecting folks to contractors and resources to help pay for it, um, that would be useful. But 12 months, yeah, it seems, seems reasonable, especially if it's active this fall, that gives you about six months to line up a contractor and another six months to make it happen. So, so that would update the wording and remove all the dates. In the well, that's that's the water. Well, yes, the water ordinance to remove yeah, the dates and make it align it with the sewer ordinance that says one year yeah. after availability. Both will not be the same. And if you're getting both somewhere, it should say that. If you're getting water and sewer, it's like both. So the matter of the two. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. I would add that in there so that that right. way it's it's in the code. And we do have some people that are just getting water and no sewer. Yep. And that's fine. And they then, can connect now. I have to wait for a letter. Well, they have gotten a letter. Oh, well, they have. Okay. Have you yep. sold any meters yet? And Re applications for water. Right. Two, two trenches have got three trenches have gone in. Correct. So the meter and plumbing pieces. Yeah. Correct. Okay. So do we have to make a motion or anything on that? Or are we, is it, is it, um, well, we'd make it'd be a motion to a recommendation to council. To the council to decide. 
I didn't go to PNC. Hmm? Well, I guess it'd be, you're right. Um, what's the right process? We make, we make a recommendation to PNZ. I I would suggest that it's a recommendation to planning and zoning to visit these two sections and make them compatible. And um, as based on the recommendation of water and sewer committee's input, how they would want that to be. I think I'd look at the whole order. You know, there could be a handful of other little items that probably could be tweaked. Now that there's a little more clarity there, I, you know, you're gonna do it, Shmuzzle. Like, Got all the I's and across all the T's. I move that we recommend PNZ review the ordinance, update the language, and align align those two sections. And stick with the one year is what you're with the yeah. 12 months time right right and if you're getting both it's the latter of the two right sorry I'm no yeah, it's, i mean it is you know within the one year of the letter right so it depends on when the letter gets mailed out right but and that's our policy is yeah that's what sunny and i've been doing there's a second i'll second it Any other comments? Uh, I just go back to my comment of the of the twenty four month. I think that will be more acceptable by your residents, and uh, but that's um, we'll see what, what comes out of the PNZ committee and council too. So that's any other comments. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 I I'll vote for unanimous. Uh, opposed, I should say. Okay, that's approved. You're opposed. You're opposed. What's that? You changed to oppose? No. Okay, so I, I said unanimous. To make it unanimous, I'll say yes. Yeah. Thank you. So we're as a team, I guess, so that's okay. All right. Um Dylan shared a letter from M E S E R B Messer. Messer. Okay. Do you want to explain what it's all about? Um, so it, Messer is a um, membership organization that is kind of a, a group of smaller municipalities and, and some uh, engineering firms and contractors uh, that advocates on the behalf of their members, uh, primarily to state regulators. Uh, so uh, issues like uh, changing limits, uh, uh, what do they call them, priority pollutants, things of concern, things that the state and the EPA are looking at regulating, uh, Messer, advocates on behalf of their membership to, to work with the PCA um, to make sure that those regulations and rules um, include the perspective of cities and treatment plants. Um, so one of the documents that was attached was uh, a PFAS, right? Um, it's forever chemicals to hear about in the news. Um, some states uh, have completely banned the application of biosolids. Um, oh, yeah. Yes. Wow. <laughs> what do you do with it, right? Um, you truck it across state lines to somebody that doesn't. But um, but things like that, um, Messer advocates on behalf of the members with PCA to try to prevent that kind of thing from happening, to make sure that the rules follow the science um, and that the impacts to the uh, members are, are included in kind of the rulemaking process. Um, and so the city of Rochester is a member, um, as well as I, I think there's a list of, of other members. Stantec yeah, is a is a member. Um, and so, you know, 
the regulatory certainty component uh, of our permit uh, is helpful, although it only includes phosphorus and nitrogen. So for example, if uh, if PFAS regulations do come out, Messer is going to be one of the organizations trying to, to shape those rules um, so they're not too restrictive and damaging on our end. Um, chloride pollution um, is another, things from salt, from water softeners and road salt, that's something else that MESSERV is actively working with the PCA on. Um, so, so there are still components of what MESSERV does that could be beneficial to the city. Just looking at, and I didn't include just, um, it didn't include this in the packet, but there's the membership is, is it larger cities, um, Albert Lee, Austin, Mankato, Northfield, Orana, Red Wing, Rochester, Wasika. Um, and then the organizations, there's um, MSA Professional, um, SEH, and Stantec are members. So. And I think I didn't do the numbers, but dues are based on the number of accounts, I think. So the smaller the organization, the lower your dues are. Um, I think it's a dollar. Somewhere around a dollar, it's like $500 a year. It's you know, at the membership. bottom of the at a glance page. A dollar per billing account for local billing account. There is, yeah. And 2000 for non-voting associates. You know, we have a regular certainty for phosphorus and nitrogen, but unlimited for 10 years. So it's a matter of we may want to consider joining it later on, or we can. I think you just want to bring it to our attention. Yeah, right I, have, I have no, um, no position either way. Um, I, I do feel like it's a valuable organization, but, um, you know, whether or not. City of Morocco um, decides to become a member. I don't have a strong opinion on that. Have you ever gone into the meetings or? I have not. Um, but no my, people that have gone. My colleagues do. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, the the uh, deputy director of public works in Rochester, um, uh, Aaron, Aaron Lockstein, mm -hmm. who used to work at the BCA, mm -hmm. um, he's on the board. Yeah. Oh, no, we worked with him initially on our. Yep. Nice guy. So yeah, I mean, I, I think, um, you know, it might be, if we're really interested, it might be helpful to call some of those other communities that are still in smaller places like Red Wing and Wasika and just see what, what value they have mm -hmm. is fine from it. But um, this tells my question when I read through the packet, they offered some like review or something. Permit review. Permit service, review. Yeah. Let's put that. I was like, well, what else do we get out of it? They're advocating, they're going to advocate. Mm -hmm. like, well, well, the more members they have, the more, um, like any organization, right? The more people you're advocating on behalf of, the um, louder your voice is. So. <clears throat> but I, Larry, do you have any comments? About that? Yeah. Well, I kind of think probably overall it's probably a good idea. I think they host a conference, too, an annual conference. Right. Yeah. Said I've never, I, I, I go through just the bare minimum. Do you know why Stantec joined? Like, what are they getting out of it? Just to support the efforts of communities that we represent. Pretty engaged and yeah, stuff like that. So. I know what like Red Wing and others are getting out of it. Like, sure. Sorry, was that different? I was just saying I like Dylan's idea of asking like Red Wing and other communities, like they joined, what are they getting out of it? Like for sure. their fee, yep. right? For their dollar per user or whatever fee. Are you so, getting a value? Well, let's say we join and then we start getting information about PFAS and other things. 
I mean, who amongst us is going to be able to answer it, let alone having Joe look at it? Or you? So then we're into it. We're, we're paying Joe to look at it from the city standpoint. So we're if we want if we want him to respond from us from our city engineer perspective, is this a good thought, bad thought, or we just don't send it to him and somebody in our committee decides to respond? Usually, I don't know, yeah, it's, usually it's the money that you're going to spend it. What can we? How can we contribute? I guess to make it worth our value. Yeah, I think those kind of things are usually held at a either quarterly or annual meetings, the membership will, you know, everybody sends a representative and they have discussions and talk back and forth. And some, you know, the, um, the board will kind of say where discussions with the PCA have been and, and what the membership thinks of different things. So it's, um, but, but certainly I, I would be willing to um, call a few of those more local communities and smaller um, and just see what their thoughts have been. I imagine they send out, you know, information on things they're working on or opposed to or advocating for just, yeah. but that, that information's out there. Anyway. I, I mean, yeah, I think, a, I think a big one recently that Rochester worked on in the last 10 years was the chloride rules. Um, for So for example, um, chloride is a pollutant salt. You know, if you discharge salty water, um, PCA has an interest in regulating that. The city of Rochester does not have a centralized water treatment plant and so therefore could not really control the amount of salt that's in the wastewater. And so uh, through Messer, uh, worked hard to make sure that the regulatory process included a variance that said, hey, if you fit these criteria, you can apply for a variance from the <laughs> regulation. Um, and so that's, I think, one example, but I'm sure they're, like I said, I'd be willing to um, reach out to some other folks and see if there are other stories like that. So. I think that would be a good Just table this for now. And if you sure. do a couple of telephone calls, that'd be great. Yep. Bring that back to the committee. Okay. Thank you. PFAs must be a big topic right now because I'm thinking I just got a uh, notice from another attorney that is looking for if we have any uh, in our drinking water stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. it is. It's it's like a it's a buzzword been around since the fifties, but now it's a big deal. But yeah, it's it's hitting the legal community right now. <laughs> I these smell money, right? Yeah. There's Huge settlements. Yeah. It's, it's, it's companies areas. like DuPont and 3M, 3M. Are, are the the plaintiffs or whatever you want to call it. <clears throat> All right. I believe that's everything on our agenda. The motion the meeting adjourned. This, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Could I just this regulatory certain Certainty agreement that was signed in 2019 was that right? Did I miss that conversation? Did we ever get a copy back that was fully executed? Nothing in our agenda, or my missing? It was in the attachments that you sent. Was the regulatory certainty agreement with the PCA? <clears throat> yeah, I'm sure you have a. Oh, executed that was the title copies. of this. Of the regulatory certainty agreement, I don't have a copy because I never get a copy of the final agreements. Nobody ever sends it to me. I, I assumed that was related to the Messer conversation for for municipalities that do not currently have nitrogen or phosphorus. <laughs> agreements that right, agreed. One of the things Messer <laughs> is working on, I'm sure, for those communities yeah, we were, is making oh, sure those limits are priced. Cities to get the permit for regular certainty too. It's a lot of so ten year grace of any phosphorus or nitrogen limits, nitrates, nitrogen limits changes. So, okay. sorry, thank you. Um, is there a second? Larry will second that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All in favor, say aye. 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 Thank you very much. Um, say just real quick, Kane and Joe, the the jetting. Uh, 
Um, the greasy areas have they been uh, has it been